let's move our attention towards the most important the most committed secondary lymphoid organ and that is lymph node we are well familiar lymph node and spleen are highly organized and capsulated just like any other vital organs important organs of our body lymph node is having stromal cells inside it what are stromal cells supporting tissues a network of supporting tissues which are present inside lymph node these are going to actually guide the lymphocytes for their secondary education secondary education which is very specific for only that antigen which has infected our body now the network which is packed with lymphocytes macrophages dendritic cells even follicular dendritic cells and many other types of cells this complete network is formed and that is supported by the stromal cells the native cells the actual cells present in lymph node all the organ born or tissue born infections will be taken care in lymph node the nearest lymph node in the last lecture we have seen about lymphatic vessels and now we are going to uh, take a look of the lymph nodes how actually the lymphatic vessels are going to bring that lymph and along the lymph those germs those bacteria pathogens which have infected the organ will also move in the lymph node now what the lymph node is going to do it is going to provide a micro environment a proper environment for antigen presentation for cellular as well as humoral response cellular which will mainly involve cytotoxic t lymphocytes which will directly kill the cells humoral which will mainly involve the th lymphocytes and b lymphocytes and their interaction to form antibodies this is the capsule around the lymph node and just below the capsule which is actually a fat deposition there is a subcapsular sinus the portion which is just below the capsule and if we will come below that starts cortex this is the cortex region in which these follicles are present uh, which are mainly the b zone that is b lymphocyte zone which are rich in b lymphocytes mainly other than that uh, below the cortex there is paracortex region which is also called t zone that is the t lymphocyte zone means it is rich in t lymphocytes mainly other than that dendritic cells are also present in this area in a big amount then below that or inner to it are present medulla medulla is that region which is sparsely populated not very uh, compact not very dense these regions are dense while medulla is comparatively sparsely populated because only those lymphocytes which have taken proper education and they will move towards medulla and through medulla through the efferent lymphatic vessels they are going to exit the lymph node now these are the afferent lymphatic vessels which are bringing the lymph from the surrounding tissues or organs and these all afferent lymphatic vessels there might be many are piercing in the lymph node and what these afferent lymphatic vessels are bringing they are bringing antigens as well as antigen presenting cells in that area and of course no doubt the lymph is going to get poured in the lymph node lymph node is also an organ of our body and wherever there is a organ there is always blood supply you can see this is the lymphatic artery and this lymphatic artery will branch into many capillaries and capillaries will reunite to form venules that is lymphatic vein and from these capillaries actually the exchange of oxygen carbon dioxide and nutrient and wastage will take place but in this area as the arteries will reunite to form venule region here are high endothelial venules that is hev are present and these are the regions where we have quite thin but quite elongated endothelial cells and through that the nine lymphocytes which are through 
blood which have been migrated here they are it's easy for them to come out because it's also blood circulation so lymph will be formed from it also and this plasma as well as the nine lymphocytes which will uh, uh, seep out of this mainly high endothelial venule which is quite thin layer and that's why or highly elongated type of cells and it's easy if the cells are more elongated it's easy to prick out of that and that's why if I will <clears throat> take a look of the high endothelial venule region this one this region then it has such elongated cells and that's why the lymphocytes which are present in the blood it's easy for them to get out of it and thus this is the main source of this blood circulation is the main source of naive lymphocytes but don't forget other than that the afferent lymphatic vessels which is bringing lymphs with antigen it also has some B lymphocytes as well as T lymphocytes but while bringing that antigen it is well possible they might have engulfed B lymphocyte itself is a APC and they are presenting cells other than that the lymph may contain one percent other cells in that some monocytes might be present which might have been uh, gener might, might have generated macrophages and now these macrophages will also act as APCs and these APCs are engulfing processing that antigen and presenting that antigen in the group of MHC class 2 to whom? to the TH lymphocytes and the TH lymphocyte will take education from it through TCR as well as CD4 receptor and certain co-receptors and through that they will secrete cytokines and these cytokines might have activated B lymphocytes so it is well possible that the lymph which is coming from the tissue and getting poured into the lymph node might be having already processed antigen uh, uh, processed antigen and presented antigen now, the infected tissues from that antigen through afferent lymphatic vessels will enter. Either it is already processed because there are B lymphocytes, there are APCs which might have processed and presented it or not. If not, then still there are many APCs which are entering through or which are present in the uh, lymph node and they will engulf it and process and present it now what actually the T cells in the lymph node are doing the T cells after entering the lymph node especially the naive T cells the source of naive T, cells, T lymphocytes is the arteries and through high endothelial venue it will enter into the lymph node and this T cells will require generally 16 to 24 hours even in the lymph node to browse the MHC antigen complex. The APC must have process presented in MHC uh, antigen in the group of MHC class 2 but these naive T cells will require 16 to 24 hours even to browse it to uh, find it out. After that, after joining to it, uh, especially through the high endothelial uh, venue, of bloodstream the naive lymphocytes will enter and where actually they are going to enter they are going to enter mainly in the paracortex region this is the cortex and this is the paracortex region and in the because first they will enter in the cortex and after that in the paracortex region and after that if antigen is not present then these naive T lymphocytes might remain in the lymph node itself for several days in the paracortex region this paracortex region this region present such a network you can see there is a network called follicular reticular cell conduct system and this is also called FRCC that is follicular reticular cell conduct system and this is actually a network of fibroblastic reticular cells FRC you can see these red lines which are formed by these red colored cells that is follicular reticular cells and in these are trapped dendritic cells these green colored are the dendritic cells and these are your T lymphocytes which are guided by 
this follicular reticular cell conduct system which won't allow any T lymphocyte to go here or there in a FSI manner. They will guide it properly in a stepwise manner and you can see these dendritic cells or any other APCs are presenting the antigen to the T lymphocytes. This is about what the paracortex region which is having follicular reticular cell conduct system that is FRCC and here the T cell will take mainly the education but other than that B cells what will happen to the B cells we are well familiar the B lymphocytes have B cell receptors that is some antibodies are present on their surface and the antibody themselves will act as their receptors and through that they will the antigen presentation will be done in the MHC class 2 but this all will take place in the follicle because the naive lymphocytes will enter through the artery and here the B lymphocyte as well as the H lymphocyte through the high endothelial venule will enter in this cortex and then paracortex region but here B lymphocytes immediately after entering will go in the follicle region which is the B zone and in the follicle region they will present the uh, antigen in the group of MHC class 2 because they themselves are APCs and they are now here guided by the follicular dendritic cells you can see this is a follicle and such many follicles are there and I have shown a picture of a follicle what is there inside a follicle there are many follicular dendritic cells and you can see they have formed a network in such a way that they won't allow the B cell to go anywhere here and there. They will guide it properly and only after that they will be able to present it. If the antigen is small, then smaller antigen in that B lymphocyte themselves will act as APCs. But sometimes the antigen is big. In such case the macrophages will come forward because macrophages are phagocytic cells so they can uh, uh, increase their size, can engulf and process and present in the group of MHC class 2. These follicles will sometimes have germinal centers in it. If it will have germinal center, that is what secondary follicle. What is germinal center? If we will observe these follicles, we will came to know inside this there are center like this. If such center is observed, we will call this as secondary follicle. And if such center is not there, we will call it primary follicle. So, primary and secondary are the two types of follicles which are formed in the uh, uh, in the uh, lymph node. And in the secondary follicle actually proper, uh, proper working or proper presentation of the antigen is taking place. And it is actually more rich in B lymphocytes. Many a times the memory T and B lymphocytes remain in the secondary lymphoid organ that is the lymph node itself if they will remain in the lymph node itself they will be called central memory cells but effector memory cells are such that they will remain in the tissues the tissue or organ in which infection had taken place so they are all in the surrounding tissue or tissue fluid even tissue fluid which is present in the around the organ or uh, tissues and in that also they might be present and they are called effector memory cells any organ born infection any organ of our body because in every organ lymph is born so any infection or antigen or uh, any bacteria is there or pathogen is there that is carried to the nearest lymph node and in that the process of pre processing presentation of the antigen will take place and for that this complete micro environment is provided by lymph node but lymph node being an organ of our body it itself has its own blood circulation and through that actually again new nile T and B lymphocytes will enter through high endothelial venule region and again they can also take the education so and of course, they are guided, the T lymphocytes are mainly guided by FRCC and B lymphocytes are mainly guided by the follicular dendritic cell network which is present in the follicles, primary as well as secondary follicle. Secondary follicle in which germinal center is seen. Germinal center itself is a bunch of B lymphocytes and thus 
the lymph node is uh, one of the most essential secondary lymphoid organ now one important point do i have lymph nodes only in specific positions or in my body if any lymph node is present in this area is it necessary that others will also have not necessary because in a particular organism suppose any infection will take place in any part of the body then in that the lymph node will be maybe generated in that area the lymphatic vessels might form any particular lymph node in that area if a, in case of any other person if infection hasn't taken place in that area then he might not have that lymph node but he might be having infection in any other area or entry of germs in some other area and he might be having any other lymph node in that area so the position of lymph nodes varies in all of us because it depends on which type of or where actually the infection is going to take place this is all about lymph node thank you